How far would you go to defend your homeland and honor your family oath? Would you cross the impossible, as Hannibal did? Imagine for a moment, a world steeped in conflict, where two mighty powers, Rome and Carthage, are locked in a bitter struggle for supremacy. Our tale begins in the aftermath of the First Punic War, a conflict whose outcome left Carthage humiliated and thirsting for revenge. In this charged atmosphere, a young Hannibal, son of the Carthaginian general Hamilcar Barca, made a solemn oath to his father. He vowed never to be a friend to Rome. This was not a pledge taken lightly. It was a commitment that would shape the course of his life and with it, the destiny of empires. The stage was set for the Second Punic War, a conflict sparked by deep-seated resentment, an unyielding oath and the relentless pursuit of honor. So began a war that would last over 16 years, a war that would see one of the most daring military strategies in history unfold. Imagine leading an army across a treacherous mountain range in the dead of winter. This was Hannibal's audacious plan. A Carthaginian general, Hannibal set his sights on Rome, the bane of Carthage. But between him and his objective lay the punishing terrain of the Alps. In the fall of 218 BC, Hannibal embarked on his epic march from Spain, leading an army of about 50,000 soldiers and 37 war elephants. The diverse group consisted of Gauls, Iberians, and North Africans, united under Hannibal's charismatic leadership. The journey was far from easy. The harsh winter conditions of the Alps were unforgiving. Freezing temperatures, avalanches, and rockfalls were common. The narrow, icy paths were treacherous for man and beast alike. The soldiers were ill-equipped for such conditions, and the elephants were far from their natural habitat. But the natural obstacles were not the only challenges they faced. En route, they encountered hostile mountain tribes, fiercely protective of their lands. These tribes launched attacks, causing further casualties. The combination of harsh weather, difficult terrain, and enemy attacks took a heavy toll. By the time they reached the Italian side of the Alps, Hannibal's force had dwindled to around 26,000, a loss of nearly half his original army. Yet, Hannibal's determination remained unshaken. He was a leader who led from the front, sharing the hardships of his men, keeping morale high and maintaining discipline. He was a beacon of hope amidst the despair, a pillar of strength amidst the uncertainty. His unwavering resolve inspired his soldiers to keep going, to endure, to fight, and endure, they did. Despite the incredible losses, Hannibal's army emerged on the Italian side of the Alps, ready to take the war to Rome. They had survived the epic march, a feat many considered impossible, but the real test was yet to come. Their journey had ended, but their battle was just beginning. It was now time for them to face the mighty Roman Empire. What does it take to win battles against overwhelming odds? Hannibal knew the answer. In the Second Punic War, Hannibal Barca, the Carthaginian general, faced the mighty Roman Republic. His forces were often outnumbered, yet he triumphed in some of the most crucial battles, thanks to his innovative strategies and the unwavering courage of his soldiers. The Battle of Trebia, fought in the winter of 218 BC, was the first major battle of the war. Hannibal's forces were outnumbered, but his cunning and resourcefulness turned the tide. He used the harsh weather to his advantage, baiting the Romans into attacking his center while his hidden troops attacked from the rear. This pincer movement decimated the Roman forces, marking the first major Carthaginian victory. Fast forward to the following year, 217 BC. The Battle of Lake Trasimene was another demonstration of Hannibal's genius. He lured the Romans into a narrow passage between the lake and the hills, where they were ambushed on all sides. The Romans, unable to form their traditional battle lines, were routed in one of the largest ambushes in military history. But Hannibal's most famous victory came at Cannae in 216 BC. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Hannibal used a tactic now known as the double envelopment. He deliberately weakened his center, inviting the Romans to press forward. As they did, his stronger wings curved around, encircling the Romans and causing utter devastation. 
This battle was a tactical masterpiece, studied in military academies even today. Yet for all his battlefield success, Hannibal could not bring Rome to its knees. The Romans, resilient as ever, refused to be cowed. They learned from their defeats, adapting their tactics and strategy. The war continued, with neither side willing to back down. But victory on the battlefield did not mean the end of the war. Rome was not ready to concede. How do you measure the worth of a man, by his victories or his legacy? As the sun set on the Second Punic War, Hannibal, the once indomitable Carthaginian general, tasted defeat at the Battle of Zama in 201 BC. This marked the end of his audacious campaign against Rome. But the story of Hannibal does not end there. After the war, he took on political roles in Carthage, and even when he was forced into exile, he continued to pose a threat to Rome until his death. Now let's delve into why Hannibal, the general who had once brought Rome to the brink of destruction, failed to conquer the Eternal City. Despite his ingenious military tactics and the fear he instilled in the hearts of Romans, Hannibal faced insurmountable odds. His army was often outnumbered, and his homeland Carthage failed to provide him with sufficient reinforcements. Furthermore, Rome's strategy of avoiding direct confrontation with Hannibal, instead focusing on weakening his forces through attrition, proved effective. But in defeat Hannibal's legacy was cemented. His daring crossing of the Alps, his victories at Trebia, Lake Trasimene, and Cannae. These feats of military genius have echoed through the annals of history. His strategies and tactics are still studied in military academies around the world. His determination, resilience, and audacity have inspired countless leaders and warriors for over two millennia. Hannibal's story is a testament to the human spirit's ability to dare, to dream, and to defy the odds. His life serves as a reminder that victory isn't always measured in battles won, but in the indelible marks one leaves behind. We remember Hannibal not as the man who failed to conquer Rome, but as the man who dared to challenge an empire. In the grand tapestry of history, Hannibal's thread is woven with bold strokes. His story is a testament to the power of ambition, the strength of will, and the courage to fight, no matter the odds. Hannibal's epic march remains one of history's most audacious military campaigns, a testament to what one man can achieve against overwhelming odds. What can we take away from Hannibal's epic march and the Second Punic War? The seeds of conflict lay in rivalries, kindling the war. Hannibal's audacious march was a daring blend of courage and strategy, giving him victories on battlefields. Yet Rome's resilience eventually led to his defeat. However, his legacy endures, an embodiment of strategic brilliance, determination, and audacity. Hannibal's story reminds us that even in defeat, there can be a legacy of courage, determination, and strategic brilliance that stands the test of time.